always wanted to learn how to add drop shadows inside of Photoshop, but never knew exactly where or how to start? Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck, since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how easy it is to do so. I'm Andrew, and you're watching an Envato Thoughts Plus tutorial. So, what is a drop shadow? Well, it's a layer style effect that's mostly used to add depth to a layer's content in order to separate it from the other ones or the background itself. We can use the effect on anything from a real life image to a basic shape or text segment depending on the type of project that we're working on. The process of adding a drop shadow is quite simple as we will see in the following moments. For example purposes, let's say that we have a simple shape to which we want to add the effect to. We're going to start by first selecting the layer containing the shape from within the layers panel by simply clicking on it. Once the layer is selected, we're going to head over to the panel's bottom section and click on the FX button which will open up a sub-menu of all the different available layer styles that we can use. Here we'll want to click on Drop Shadow, which is the last option, which will immediately bring up the layer style window. We can achieve the same result by double-clicking on the layer itself and then checking the effect from within the style's left-sided panel or by heading over to Layer, Layer Style, Drop Shadow. Once the layer style window is visible, we can easily see all the available settings and options which are divided into two different categories, the first one being structure. Here we can control things such as the blending mode, the color of the shadow, the opacity, the angle, etc. Now I won't go over each individual setting since they're pretty easy to use and understand as long as you have the live preview option enabled. What I will do is give you a few tips that should come in handy in future projects. The first one has to do with the blend mode of your shadow, which you'll typically want to set to multiply or linear burn so that the effect itself ends up darkening the content of the layer from behind it. The second one has to do with color. Usually when you think of shadows, you tend to default to black as your main color, but depending on the background itself, you might find that using a different value could give you a more interesting looking result. The third and last one has to do with the second section of the effect settings, more precisely the noise option, which allows you to add texture to your shadow. Depending on the nature of your artwork, this little trick might come in handy since it provides an interesting looking alternative to the regular shadow look that most people are used to seeing. Once we are done adjusting the drop shadow settings, we can hit OK and the layers panel will update itself by displaying a little FX icon next to the layer to which the effect was added to. If needed, we can easily adjust its different settings at any time by simply double clicking on the effect itself and then going through the exact same process. And that's pretty much all you have to do. That being said, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.